All right. To do the final wrap-up and review of dynamic memory allocation and the type of operator overload that I did not talk about, and I'm going to do it today, uh, I'm going to give uh, create a new example, okay? We created the string uh, class, and for all those people I asked, like I gave you a, a, a challenge, and I told you uh, overload the CN operator for string, so it automatically detects what the size of the user entry is. Lots of people send me solutions using the C++ string class. Really? <laughs> I am asking you to write the string class of C++ and you are using the string class of C++ to give me the answer? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but sometimes sometimes you do some practice, so yeah, you know what I'm talking about. So all those people who who were silly and sent me the the code that say literally created a string and say C in into that string, <laughs> please resubmit. Okay, that's not the way. It's uh, the hint is that it is done. The hint is that it is done using the CN capabilities. So what you have to do, you have to get the information from the user, and if user exceeds the size, then when CN fails, then you resize the memory and you continue reading. That's the way it's done. So, and it's not an easy thing to do, at least for our level. So it's a challenging thing. I don't give 5, 10% of the first test for Nothing. You gotta sweat a little, okay? So try and see if you can do it. So what I want to do now, just to quickly go through what we have done before. Um, today I'm gonna create a dynamic integer array. So essentially what happens over here is that I am going to uh, create uh, uh, a class that should be able to replace an integer array. We have done it for strings. It was a character array. We have a problem with it because we said uh, character arrays are arrays of characters, and you have to make sure the size is right and all the things. It, it, it applies to all arrays in C++, right? Any array that you create, C++ doesn't know what the size is. So we're going to quickly create this, and I'm not going to go through the detail that much because I've already explained it so many times. I'm just going to go through it to get to the operator at line 15, okay? That's the one that I did not teach. Everything else we covered, okay? So I'm going to go through it, and uh, uh, we're going to have a little bit of dynamic memory allocation happening over there, so that's a good thing. Um, and uh, uh, listen, because some of the things that you have over there is in here, okay? Uh, again, in here, I'm, I'm working with an integer array. Over there, you're working with one entity, so you're not allocating an array of integer. I'm gonna, when I give your uh, quizzes back, lots of you had that problem, okay? However you allocate, you deallocate the same way, and you don't use the index operator for uh, dynamic memory allocation. All right, so um, we know, as we have done with uh, uh, with the character array in a string, we know that an array is uh, essentially a pointer pointing to a location of, me of memory. And that's what I'm going to do over here, all right? So I, uh, uh, it is an integer array. An integer array uh, has a pointer that points to data, and that's my data over there. And um, uh, I have the second property over there that is the size, that is an unsigned integer. It doesn't go negative. That's why I made it unsigned, therefore. Uh, it only uh, holds the size of the, of the array. Unlike string that I, because of an empty string that we implemented was actually an array of one character with a null in it, we didn't have safe empty state. This one is not the case. You can have an empty integer array that has nothing in it. There is no integers in it. Because of that, we're gonna have safe empty state in this one. Um, so, Let's start implementing. I put some of the stuff that we have over here. Um, so uh, 
Uh, and I'm going to quickly implement and go through it any place that you see that I am uh, doing goggly gook, stop me and tell me uh, how to, uh, uh, if, if, if the thing has tr is troublesome so I can explain. So this is going to be a quick implementation. We have the fault constructor that I want to create. So in integer array, first of all, I'm going to include, uh, let me bring it a little bit. I'm going to include uh, the int array dot h. Obviously, I am in the same namespace. That is SDDS. We all know these things, okay? And then we'll start. So the very first thing that I'm going to implement is the default constructor. So default constructor, the name of the class, scope resolution, the name of the class again, and the default constructor is going to work like this, correct? So I, I want to set this to a safe empty state. To set it to a safe empty state, I have to set M data to be a null pointer and the size to be zero. Okay? Obviously, uh, I can use the kindergarten version way to say M data is set to null PTR as we have done and M size is zero, right? We could do that, but I want to try initialization and see how it works. So I put a column in here and say M data will be initialized to null pointer. So not writing this one. And I'm going to actually initialize uh, that size to 0, too. So it's going to be M size will set to 0. How do we create an unsigned integer uh, literal value? Anybody knows? Anybody knows? How do we create one? Unsigned integer literal value. OK. Anyways, go study it. I'm not going to put it over there. I don't want to confuse anyone. So anyway, so I'll set that M size to 0. And that's my default uh, uh, constructor. The default constructor puts it actually essentially in a safe, empty state. As simple as that. OK. To check and see if my array is in a safe, empty state or not, I can have a function called is empty, right? I'm not going to do that. I'm going to cast a Boolean operator. Uh, I'm going to overload casting of a Boolean operator. So whenever we check the, our array in uh, a, a condition, it's going to tell us if it's in a safe, empty state or not. So I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say uh, uh, operator Boolean const, which means any at any moment, if anyone does something like this, so uh, include array using namespace sdds int main return zero. So I'm going to write over here int array. So that's what I'm creating int array i, I'm going to say if i. So if anybody does this, I want it to trigger my safe empty state checking, which means is it a valid array i? If it's a valid, a valid array, give me true, otherwise give me false. So if I wanted to, um, uh, so this is, this is uh, so to do that, I'm overloading the cast operator for Boolean. Therefore, saying int array, uh, operator bool, const, and in here I'm going to say return uh, m data being equal to null PTR. Okay? So if m data is null PTR, it's in a safe empty state, right? But it is the opposite, isn't it? So if it's true, so if these two are the same, it means it is in a safe empty state. So the object is invalid, so it should be false. So that equal is wrong. I have to say not equal. Which means 
if m data is not null pointer, I have a valid thing, everything's good, return true. If it is null, it's bad, it's false, return false, so that's my Boolean. I can also overload the not operator to do the exact same thing, to say return Boolean operator not const, and essentially do the exact same thing, uh, which means I say bool operator uh, int array, of course, int array uh, operator not and const. And in here, I'm going to say return. So this is the opposite of Boolean if not is in front of it. And so if somebody says, so if I want to say this, it means I is valid, right? I want to write something. So if I say if, let's put the bigger name for this. So, so integer array, I'm going to call it IA, integer array integer array, so I'm going to say if not integer array, i is invalid, which means safe empty state. Okay? So to do that, give me two seconds. Of course, we can have an else over here, which means the exact same thing. But it is not uncommon to do the same thing over and over in different shapes because that's how people write programs, right? So somebody wants to put an R operator, somebody just, and this works exactly for C in, C out too. So if you have a C out object, uh, if you say if C in, that essentially means if the last operation was valid, you don't need to say C in dot fail. If you say if not C in, essentially means C in dot fail. So all those functions are written in many different ways. So any way you wish, it's at your service to work. That's what we want to do. So in here, um, so this is what I'm over, uh, overloading. So this is going to be the same thing. So in here, I'm going to say there are two ways of calling it. I can either write the condition for it, or um, the best way is to actually have a function to call it, but I'm not doing it in here. Well, you can modify it later on to that. So if this is equal to null PTR, then it returns that one. So essentially, we, that's the safe empty state that we are in, OK? So uh, that's my safe empty state. And now it's set, so I know how it works, OK? So it's, this is 0, 1, safe empty state, state code. Dot CPP. So that was a safe empty state code. And let's continue. All right. Now I want to uh, create an array with certain size. So they, I want to have an array of 50 integers, OK? Uh, in, uh, in C, if I want to do that, if I want an array of 50 integers, I have to go int i50, correct? My object will be i50, like this. OK, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a, a, a constructor that creates an array like that. So um, I'm going to do it. It's pretty easy and straightforward. So that's the, the function that I'm implementing. So let me bring it right down here. It belongs to int array. It is the beginning of the life of the object, so I don't care. I just uh, do my initialization and do my uh, dynamic memory allocation. I don't need to worry about anything. So all I need to do over here is to say mdata is set to new int, right? And in here, I'm going to put uh, 50, uh, that is size, correct? But at the same time, I'm going to set m size to it. 
so I don't have to write two lines of code. So m psi is equal to that. OK? And that's it. Done. I don't need to do anything else. So I just allocated size data of integer size integers and put it the address in m data. And at the same time, in one shot, I set the m size to the value. Any problem with that? OK, so that's my constructor. Now, the other constructor, what it does is this. It actually creates an array copying an already existing C array. So, so this int array constructor does the exact same thing as the other one. But the only difference is that <clears throat> the only difference is that uh, it is going to copy whatever it has in there too. So essentially it does this. Right? And it does a loop after that for i int i set to zero, i less than size and i plus plus, and copies everything uh, from the other one into this one too. So I'm going to say m data i will be set to array i, and then add one to it. Are we OK with that? <clears throat> we can always write a for loop at the beginning, so first portion of the for loop and the second portion of the for loop, you can always add uh, statements by separating them by comma. So that's what I did. I didn't want to write it. I could have written that statement inside the for loop, but like this, it's quicker. OK? <clears throat> Again, in here, I'm not going to brush it. I'm just going to code as I do. OK? So that is that line is copying the data up to size. OK? The first line, line 8, is allocating the integer, <clears throat> setting to the size to the size and allocating the integer. The second one copies all the integers from the array that is coming in into M data. Any problem now with that? They're all good? Seriously? There are two possibilities over here. Either we are extremely good, everything's perfect, or nobody's getting what I'm doing. But it's very simple and straightforward. Yes, sir. Oh, that's fine? OK. Change his mind. OK. All right. So I did the constructor over there. The next one is the copy constructor, OK? So the copy constructor works exactly like the other constructor. The only difference is that it actually, uh, what does it do? It actually uh, uh, copies another existing object, right? That's the only thing it does. So you see I'm not reusing code. You reuse code later on. I'm just teaching, OK? That's it. I don't want to write the perfect code over here. Any code that you see is redundant, fix it, OK? Create a private function, put the code in it. Do it yourself, OK? <clears throat> As of this moment till the end of the semester, the only way for you to learn is to get my code, fiddle with it, recompile, and see how it works. That's the only way. We're going to go into more complicated stuff, inheritance, virtuality, things like that. The only way that you can follow is to go home, take my code, apply the previous things that I have done to this code, and see how it works. All right? You have to play with it. You have to write code. This is like driving. If you don't drive a car, no matter how many books you read about driving a car, you're going to hit a tree. OK? You have to make sure, hopefully, it's a tree, not a human being. But uh, again, all right. So int array. I'm doing the copy constructor, very quick, straightforward. 
So I'm copying that thing over here. All I need to do is this craves for reusing code, people. All I need to do is to say a i a dot size m size, right? And in here, I have to go up to m size potatoes, potatoes, no difference. And in here, instead of array, I'm going to say i a dot data. Done. There we go. So now I copied another existing thing. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? If you want, we are not okay. Should I explain? All right. <clears throat> so what did I do in here? So let me ask a question first. Was this clear? That was clear, right? Eh, okay, that's good. Eh, eh, I like, that's, that's okay. So what happens over here was this. In the original one, what I did was something like this. Uh, give me a second. I'm going to use my artistic capabilities. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's make this a little thicker. That's it. So the first one that we created was something like this. I had the object, so that's my object. This is the M data, and that's the size, right? Then I had a standalone C array somewhere, okay? So what I did, I measured the size of this one, okay? I allocated enough memory exactly to that size. Then I copied everything into here. And I updated the size to the value that we had over there. So that was the first one. Sorry, that was the mouse. So that's the thing that I did. So first, I had a piece of memory somewhere. I allocated enough memory for it. I put everything, and I was done. So that was like with an array. Now. With this one, the only difference was that instead of another piece of array somewhere, I had an object. So I have an already existing object that has some integers in it, and it has the size in here. So the size and how many elements it has over here is actually right in here. Okay? So now I want to create a new object out of this one. What do I do? It's exactly like the other one. The difference is that in the other one, what I did, I said it's a standalone array by itself, and they are giving me what the size of the array is, and I'm allocating enough space for it. The other one says, okay, I already have an object that is pointing to an array, which is this one. So I'm going to allocate enough memory in my new object to that size, which means I'm gonna, I have the measurement here, so I'm gonna allocate enough memory for that one. Now that the memory is allocated, what I will do, I will copy everything. So essentially, this is what happened over here. So I said, get new integer. What is the size? The size is the size of the other object. So essentially, the value of this one went in here, and the allocation happened. And then after doing that, I wrote a loop starting from zero up to the size. One by one copied all the data from the old object into the new object, and I kept going. So essentially, one by one, I copied all the information from here to here until I was done. So I copied everything right to the end, and I copied it right over there. And then after that, I had an object that is an exact copy of the other object that I had. And that was the copy constructor. Are we okay? Hopefully. <coughs> <coughs> now, we can do the exact same thing. So that, that's copy constructor. And we said any time you have copy constructor, you need an assignment operator. There are no questions about it. Copy constructor, you need an assignment operator. There, is, there are no questions about it. That's how it is, and that's how it works. 
So the assignment operator is essentially identical to a copy constructor. The only difference, this is actually a very good question for the test, what is the difference between the logic of an assignment operator and a copy constructor? I'm going to put that one in final exam. Anyways, what is the code difference between an assignment operator and a copy constructor? Essentially nothing. It's identical with only one difference. Ah, two differences when you say return. So first major re difference is that an assignment operator is a function. It's not constructor. So it returns something, which it will be always the reference of the object that is copied into, set into. So it always returns this. All right? The second prop difference between a constructor and an assignment operator is that a, co a constructor is building a new object, therefore it doesn't have an already allocated memory in it. Where assignment operator is assigning an already existing object to another, therefore we have to be careful because all the data of the current object should be wiped out before I uh, assign it to anything else. So the major difference between an assignment operator would be the fact that I have to say delete M data to wipe the data out. Okay? That's the most important difference. And there is still one more. So it's actually three. <laughs> I keep going. Okay. So number one, an assignment operator returns the reference of the current object. Number two, it has to deallocate the memory that the current object is holding. If the current object is in a safe empty state, I don't care, it's small, nothing's going to happen. But if it's not in a safe empty state, that delete at line 16 will take care of it, wipe out the old data, and then it will be overwritten so we don't have any uh, uh, memory leak in here. Another thing is to deal with stupidity. What does it mean? You never know if somebody does this or not. So they say int array, say reference r, set to ia. They can do that, right? Essentially, I'm creating a new name for that ia. So I have one object with two names, correct? Everybody's OK with that? We know what references are, correct? And then we forget about it. We think there are two objects. And then we do this. So we write some lines of code. We write something in here. I don't know what. Whatever logic we are writing. OK? Whatever logic. I don't know what I wear. And then a few lines later, by mistake, we write this. I'm setting set the R to IA. But they are both same object. Right? Compiler doesn't know that. Compiler says, I'm going to call the assignment operator of R and set it to IA. So what happens is that the assignment operator will be called. IA over here will be essentially the object itself. So first it's going to delete itself. Then it's going to set itself to itself, which means it's going to be chaos, because it just deleted it. Now it wants to copy it, right? So I have to prevent that. How can I detect if the object that is here is the same as me, so I don't do anything? <laughs> I should somehow check to see, hey, am I being assigned to myself? If I'm being assigned to myself, ignore the operation. Let them deal with the, like, don't do anything. How can I do that? How can I find out if two objects are identical, they are the same? How? Check to see if they are in the exact same place in memory. If they sit in the exact same space in memory, they are the same, right? How do I do that? Address. We know that this pointer, T-H-I-S, this pointer holds the address of the current object, correct? So I have to say, do this operation if 
this address, not target of this, but this address, the address of the current object, is not equal to the address of the incoming object. So let's call that IA actually right operand. I'm going to call it R old because that's, that's actually right operand. So, so we kind of see what, what are we dealing with here. Did I change all of them? I think I. So I'm going to say if the address of the current object is not equal to the address of the incoming object, do the copying. Otherwise, skip the whole thing and just return the reference. So now I prevented self-copying. That is impossible in a copy constructor because you're building a new object. It is impossible to copy itself. Okay? It's building a new object. But in an assignment operator, the left operand might ex the left operand, the left object might exist. So we have to delete its content. Now we have to make sure that the left and right are not the same by mistake. And therefore, that, that's what we do. So what you see right now in this haze of a board that should get clean soon, hopefully, <clears throat> what you see right now in this code is literally universal code for the assignment operator overload. So whenever you do assignment overload, <clears throat> the, very first, so the very first thing you do is this. You write this code. Whenever you write an assignment operator, this is an empty assignment operator where you haven't thought of what you want to do yet. You write the assignment operator op uh, uh, prototype. You know what it is. That's what it is. It can't be anything else. Then you write, if this is not equal to the address of that one, open bracket, curly bra close curly bracket, return this. Then you think, how do I do the copying in that if statement? Of course, first you're going to delete. Then you're going to do the copy, and that's exactly what we have done. OK? So the blue highlighted thing over here is the actual logic of doing the assignment copying. The rest is the things that we have to add to make sure it works with other stuff. OK? Are we OK with this? All right, so that was a quick review on that one. And as you see, these code, th these lines of code are all repeated. So if I were you, I would have put in that one into a private, proper, private function and called the function instead of doing that, like an allocate and copy function, a function that allocates and copies. You can just do that and pass the argument so you don't have to keep doing this over and over. OK, so that's what we have done. Now, resize. How do I resize? You can always, again, uh, as I mentioned, you can always add functions is empty or stuff like that. Please do it yourself. I just did it with the operator overload because I wanted to review it, OK? So if you want to have is empty function, do it, please, you by yourself, OK? And then call is empty, func is empty function in those operator overloads. Um, oh, destructor, the most important thing. Oh, wow, 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 I, was, I forgot about that one. So the destructor is the most important thing to have int array. And what do we do into this structure? Very simple and straightforward. We just delete the data, and we're done. We don't do anything else. Delete the data. And for some reason, I'm getting an error with that. Anyways, yeah. I don't need to set the size to zero because the object is dying. Who cares what is in that variable? It's going away. As long as I take care of all the like, I don't need to make m data null. I don't need to make the size zero. I don't need to do that because the object is dying. I don't care. Again, disposable thing plate. You ate something in it. You don't wash it and throw it away. You just throw it away, right? It's exactly what it is. I don't want to reuse that thing. It's gone. So that's what I'm going to do. So that's that. So now I have the int array over here set, resizing the array. If I want to make the array bigger or smaller, what can, what can I do and how does it work? This the resizing uh, uh, an array is pretty straightforward. Should I show you the slide for it again or I just go for the logic as a review? Anybody wants to see the slide of how the process, what is the process of resizing memory? You want to see it again? All right. Those slides are pretty handy. It's a good idea to have them and, and to take a look at them every now and then. Huh.
Yeah, so, so memory sizing was done like this. I'm just going to go through it. Oh, that's actually called M data over here too. Cool. So it is done like this. So when you have a size that you want, if you want to resize it, you have a size property and you have something that points to the data. So the very first thing that you do, you find out what is the new sizes that you want to resize to that one. Bigger or smaller, it does not matter. You allocate the, the amount of memory, but not to lose the original data. You create a temporary pointer to the exact same type of data. And then you copy everything from the old data into new data. And your logic over here should be, because new size is not always bigger. Sometimes it's smaller. Sometimes you have too many, too much memory allocated. You are dealing with social insurance number of all people in Canada. You have 30 million over there. And now you said, I don't want that anymore, but I want to reuse that array for something else only for 10 integers. So you want to make it smaller. Okay, so if that's the case, you have to remember the logic of copying that copies, it's not always up to M size. It's M size or new size, whichever comes first. So you have to do the copying up to one of these two, whichever comes first. I'll show it to you how. So new size, and that's the new size that is get, getting copied. Everything gets copied into this one, into that one. Then you delete the old data because now you have the, the new one. And after the deleting the old data, uh, uh, everything's going to be gone, but you have your, the copy of the information in a new one, so there is no problem. There is no data loss. Then you make sure that the size is updated to the value. So these are the ones, so you have the size. And then after that, you make the old pointer to point where your temporary pointer is pointing. And then after that, the scope is over. The temporary pointer will be gone, but the address is still in M data, so you're information is resized. And that's exactly what we are going to do. So we're going to do a resize over here. So the function will be resize, void resize, unsigned, int new size. So first, a temporary pointer, allocate enough memory. So I'm going to have an integer pointer temp. And I'm going to set it to new int to the new size, whatever the new size is. OK? Now that I have the new size, I have to copy everything from the old one to the new one, right? So I have everything in there. I have to copy everything from the new one. Let's cheat and take that thing in here. So I'm going to write that loop over here to do the copying. So essentially, I'm saying copy everything. But this one is reverse. I'm copying from M data. So I'm going to say. Oh, the resize belongs to int array, sorry. OK, so I'm going to say go up to m size, into m data, and uh, uh, from, sorry, from m data and copy it into the temp. So temp i. will be set to m data. And let's take that plus plus out over there and put it someplace that makes sense so I don't have to rewrite the thing. OK, and one extra thingy. So, so what happens over here, it gets the data from m data and puts it in m um, to m size. But what if new size is smaller than that one? To fix that, I'm going to say, <clears throat> while i is less than m size and i is less than new size, so whichever goes wrong, it's going to stop the loop. So if M size is smaller, it's going to be that many copying. If new size is smaller, it's going to be that many. So it's going to go through it and copy everything. And now that everything is copied, now that we have copied everything from the, uh, the old one uh, into the new one, we need to put our cell phones on mute. All right, sorry about that. There we go. So, yeah, so now that we copied everything from the old one uh, to the newly allocated memory, uh, what I need to do is to update the size. So I'm going to say M size will be set to new size. And I don't need the old one anymore, so I'll delete the, the, the M data. 
Okay, so m data is gone, m size is updated, and temp is now pointing to the newly allocated memory, right? I have to update m data to point to the new one now. So what I'm going to say is m data is set to temp. And I'm done. Okay? Finished. When scope is over, what is the local variable in here? Temp. So that temp, the pointer will be gone. But the memory it's allocated will remain. And that memory that is allocated, that it, it, it got allocated, is being pointed by M data, so I'm fine. Are we okay with this? Again, any place you see a new, you should not delete it. I don't know why, but this happens. That's why I'm mentioning this awkward thing that I see every single time in tests and assignments. People delete temp for some reason here. At the, line, at the last line, they say, they're right now I'm done. Let me delete temp too. You just deleted all the things that you copied. Don't. The temp is not supposed to get deleted. Like, not every single time that you have a new, you have to have a delete. Okay? So please, uh, careful about that. Follow the logic. Don't blindly type the things like, new, delete, I'm going to do that. No, don't do that. Okay? Make sure that it's needed. Okay? Or even worse, they don't delete the temp, the data, but delete the temp instead. So anyway, so that's resizing. So re that resizes the memory to whatever size I want. Okay? Now, this is all beautiful and good, but if you noticed, I have no way to access the, <laughs> the elements of this array. I need to actually access the elements of the array, right? We can always write a function for it. So I can have a function, and we have stuff like that created in different collections. So I can have a function called element at, and in here have an index. OK, and what do I return here? I can return the reference of the element the user wants to go to. As easy as that. So I can simply say integer reference. So that element at will represent the element of the array. So let me comment the things that I did not mention, that I did not set. So we can actually test our code. All right. So writing element at is pretty simple. So I'm going to write something like this. I'm going to, um, so it's an integer reference, int array. What is that in R thingy that comes up? I don't know. Int array. Um, and uh, element at, unsigned, int index. And I can actually do a pretty cool thing in here. Uh, oh, actually, I don't have the size either. We don't know what is the size of an array. The most important thing that we have, the most important thing that we have in C language is that we cannot find out what the size of an array is. Arrays don't carry their sizes. We have to remember it somehow create a variable for it or something. Arrays, are they don't have a size. If you pass an array through a function, you cannot see what the size of the array was. You can't do that. So we have to fix that with this. So let's actually create a function that gives us the size. And that's like a one-liner function. There's no problem with that. So I simply go int size. Of course, it's const because it doesn't change anything. And in here, I'm going to say int, uh, int array size const, and you return m size. There's no hidden agenda over it. It's very simple. Return uh, m size. Whatever the size is, going to get it. Now, element at, what does it do? It simply returns m data index. Right? Because I can always access 
pointers, arrays, potatoes, potatoes. Same thing. I can say m data index, and because it returns its reference, it actually represents it. So you can do stuff with it. What do I mean by that is this. In my programming here, I can actually write, uh, say, int array 10. I need integer i. So I can say over here for i set to 0, i less than 10, and i plus plus. I can actually say ia dot element at, and I'll put over here i will be set to, uh, so let's add something else over here, j set to 20 or 10 or 100, whatever. Then in here I'm going to say j plus equal 100. So I'm going to put the vat, set this to j. So because the function element at, is returning the reference of the element, you can put it at left side of assignment operator. Remember, references can be at left side, what we call an L value, which means because it returns the reference of that element, the function becomes a new name for that element. Therefore, you can set its value using the reference. OK? And Using this, it actually sets the elements one by one, and then you can print them using the same thing. So you can actually say uh, for i set to 0, i less than 10, i plus plus. You can actually print them out, see out uh, i a dot element at i. And let's make it comma separated or space separated. So. So, and, I, and we need the, the, stand, the, the IO stream, so I'm going to say include IO stream and using namespace STD, using namespace STD. So now that I have this thing, if I run the program, first I'm going to run it and then we'll go through it. Three years later, you will see it actually prints everything. OK? So what happens over here is very straightforward. So it actually, um, did I have, why it says mismatch? It gave me a warning with mismatch with unsigned integer. We'll find that later on and fix it. So if, if I run this thing, uh, because again, as I mentioned, when it comes over here, it returns the reference. So when I actually uh, come to the code, it returns m data index. So essentially, the code that we have, it returns m data index. So when it comes out, it's as if you have m data index over here. Therefore, it sets it to the value because it's a reference. If it wasn't a reference, you would get an error because references don't present anything, right? They are not new names for anything. And then it keeps going over and over and over and everything's set. OK? So and I'm going to come to the hoopla moment now, OK? Which is this one. So since I'm returning the reference of the index over here, I have actually, and, um, I have actually an operator can, that can represent that one, which means it's the index operator. So what I can do, I can do have the exact same logic in a function called operator index. So if I come over here, the element at that I have, the identical thing is with an operator index, which essentially means if somebody puts an index beside the object, call this function. So now, instead of writing element at, I can actually put the index operator over here. And voila, I have an array. Done. So it works exactly like an array now. And you can print it exactly the same way because it returns the reference. So in here I can say IAI. I. So now I just 
like, I want you to appreciate this. I just created an, a dynamic array. It's not a very automatic one. I'll make it automatic, but we'll see what the difference is. First of all, I can change its size anytime, any moment I want. If I have 10, now I want to have 20, all I need to do is to say ia.resize 20. Now I have 20 integers. So I can have another for loop in here exactly the same way. Saying for i set to this one. So I'm not initializing i, so i will be picked up from the last one, which means, or let's set something so we know. So i set to 10, so I'm, gonna, I'm setting the rest, and I'm going to go up to 20 here. And in here, I'm going to say print from 0 to 20. And of course, I'm going to have a new line happening here because I want to see what happens. So C out and L, and C out and L. So if I, if I run this program, what happens is that first it has an array of 10 elements, and then it becomes 20. I don't have to recreate anything. I can just change the size of the element. Not only that, I can make that thing automatic, which means the main problem with C language is that if you exceed the size of the array, what's going to happen? It writes in people's memory and it dies, right? I can simply detect that because I have a function for it, right? So in here, because I want to reuse my code, I'm just gonna, um, I'm just gonna call over here return element at if you don't mind. I don't want to write it in two different places. So element at index, it's the same thing, right? Okay. So now. In here, in element at, what I need to do is to check and see if they are within the boundaries of the array. How can I check? Index cannot be negative because it's an unsigned integer, right? So I only have to check to see if it's going more than m size or it's equal. So I have to, I have to say if index was greater than or equal to m size, then you're out of your mind. Sorry, you're out, of your <laughs> you're out of your size, OK? So what I need to do over here? Resize. I simply say resize. What is the new size? Index plus 1, right? Is it plus 1? It is plus 1, right? I have to resize. Because index 9 is actually 10, right? So index plus 1. OK, so if they put index 50, it's going to create 51 elements and then return the index. The rest will be garbage, but who cares? <laughs> At least the, 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 the array resizes itself and it keeps going. So, so essentially, I can remove the resize over here and just let it go. Every single time, it's going to resize itself. and and the array is going to be big at the size that it's going to print 20. It's going to be 20. Right? So I have no problem with using this array anything, any how I want. I don't need to care about if it's big or small. It's very inefficient, extremely inefficient. Extremely inefficient. Why it's extremely inefficient? Because for every time that I'm exceeding the size by 1, what happens? Reallocates, copies, deletes, sets, gets out. Reallocate, copy, every single assignment or access, accessing the element. It's a bad thing. I don't want that. So for this, the reallocation of memory, people get their PhD in that algorithm to see what is the proper way of resizing. We're going to do the kindergarten version of it. We're going to say, if they exceed the size, I'm going to create even 10 more. <laughs> you can do that, right? You can say, if they went one more, I'm going to create 10 more. So at least I reallocate every 10 times. You can do that. You can, there's, there's no problem beside You can just simply say, if they exceeded the size, go plus 11. So instead of this being called over and over and over, it's going to happen every 10 times. 
because now it's being resized and gets bigger, right? So that's that. And also, if anybody wants to use this and access the, <clears throat> the array through certain things and find the address and stuff like that, like we do in C language, we can always do that. We can provide them with, if, like, if we want the people who, who hack to be able to access the information in the array too. If that's the case, I can simply overload the integer pointer typecasting. So whenever my array is being casted to an integer pointer, I'll give them the address of data. Go knock yourself out. How do I do that? Again, very simple. It's the exact same thing like this Boolean thingy that I have done. And I am going to create two different versions of it. Why two different versions? I'll let you know. So that's integer pointer. And the other one's going to be integer, constant integer pointer. Const integer pointer. And the first one is not constant. So well, we assume that programmers, and, and it just returns them data. That's all it does. It just gives them the address if they want to. So if they want to work with the, with the object but do hardcore programming and hack into the memory and do whatever they want, I'll give them the, the address if they want to. So I'm, I'm opening the back door for C programmers, OK? So what happens over here is that why did I have two different versions, integer pointer and constant integer pointer? Because somebody may be a responsible person and want to pass this thing to a constant function, and you work with it. So if the reference of the object is passed as constant, I want them to still be able to get the address of the of the, of the memory. And for that, I create a constant casting too, so they can do it in both ways. If the object is constant, automatically the one that has constant integer will be called. If the object is not constant, it's going to be calling the one that uh, is non-constant. So everything's going to work just fine. So now if somebody actually wants to deal with the object directly and have an integer pointer, so integer pointer data, they can actually, but of course, uh, you know that what did I do over here? Did I do something wrong? I think I created a side effect with that. Let me take these off. Yeah. Okay, I'm not going to do that. I'll explain to you why that happened. Um, let's forget about it, okay? But you can do that. You can set it up. I have to see what's wrong with that. So give me two seconds. Yeah, I'll explain to you later on why. Uh, you know why that happened? Because... I'll explain later. It's, it's too rich for our blood at this moment. But anyways, so I'll make sure I'm not going to mention that in the other class. <laughs> OK, so uh, essentially that's why. So if they actually want to get access to the data, they can actually go, uh, let me. Let me save this first. Give me two seconds. And I'm going to try and find out what's wrong with that later on. But yeah. So one thing you can do, if you want to get the data out, I'm going to put a, give you a backdoor about it, not that one. So if you want to actually get the address of that one, you can always say data is set to address of IA0. And now you have access to the data of the of the object. And you can deal with it however you want. Okay? Those castings I'll talk about later. It didn't work out. Um, and then you can actually go a for loop like this and print everything with that value. All right? Now, you're going to go for a break, come back and do the quiz. Okay? 
go for a break, come back and do the quiz, and I'm going to just write the data over here. Pardon me? I'll explain. You got to get an email, and, and I'm going to put an announcement. It's it's right in the notes. Read the read me file in the notes. At the beginning, it tells you exactly how it's done. Okay. Okay. Guys, be back after five minutes. I start. Okay. After five minutes, I'll start. When does the class end? <laughs>